Welcome to the Garden of Favor podcast, where we are committed to cultivating lives and businesses God's way, because when we do, we see the undeniable evidence of His favor. I'm warning you now, be prepared to cry and shout some yeses and amens as we ask ourselves the tough questions and get honest with God about what He wants to do in us and through us for the kingdom. Hi, sister friend, I'm Heather teacher turned six-figure corporate exec turned top 1% network marketer turned living my best life dream job as a mindset strategist and kingdom blueprints coach for Christian entrepreneurs. I believe your life is much like a garden and your business plays a major role in fulfilling your purpose and calling. Are you ready to get your mindset and your heart set in sync with the father so you can bloom into all he's created you to be? Then let's grow girl. All right, sister friends, you asked for it. It's probably one of the most common questions I get. It is the thing I work with every single client who signs up for my one-on-one coaching package. This is this is a topic we talk about because I find that we all struggle with it at some point. And to be honest, as seasons of our life changes, this this changes too. And so I posted in my stories the other day or a week or so ago or whatever, uh, any topics and that you wanted me to do a podcast on. And again, this one comes up. And I, I've actually already covered this uh, in another episode, a portion of this. It's sacrifice versus sacred. So if you haven't listened to that episode, I encourage you to go back and listen to that. But I already have two pages of notes and I could talk about this for a long time. Like I said, I pretty much work every single one of my clients. This is something we work we work through. And let me also tell you what I share in this podcast episode. I don't want to give you, I'm not giving you a, a Five o'clock in the morning, I do this. At five thirty in the morning, I do that. Six, I do this, and then you know, I'm I'm not going to give you that because having done this enough, I know that if I tell you what I do, it might not work for you, and so that's part of the beauty of coaching is that I get to sit with you and talk with you about what is special and sacred to you. What 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 do you want your schedule to look like, and do you have your priorities straight? And so. A couple things, <laughs> not a couple things. There's a whole bunch of things. I literally have pages here and I'm like, I don't even know. I've already tried to record this a couple times and I started over because I'm like, oh, there's so, how, where do I take this? In what direction do I take this? So first of all, before we get into the tactical day-to-day and some of those tips, I really feel that the Lord wants me to share this with you. So we are very familiar with mom, boss, mompreneur, right? Those those little catchy, cutesy phrases that honestly I've come to kind of just not enjoy at all. I'm like, ugh, mompreneur. Like I've heard it a bazillion times. I've used it in post and all the things, but we all know what that is. I want you to take a second and think about this. Mompreneur, mom, boss. What is the first part of that word? It's mom right? It's mom, mom, boss, mompreneur. But the Lord really convicted me with that personally and showed me that I was trying to do entrepreneur mom or boss mom. I have been so focused on the business that I tend to forget that my first business My first ministry, my first responsibility, my first place that I need to give my best is in my home. And it's like, it's almost like this movement of moms, you're made for more and you can be more than a mom. Yes, I believe that. Yes. And there are women who really struggle with that. I actually have a client of mine. That is her whole program. It's teaching moms how to get their homes in order and show them that, you know, yeah, you can do more than be a mom. But I also think the opposite end of that is like that we have forgotten that our homes are our first ministry. And I am not preaching to you, sister. I am hugging you, crying, saying the same thing because the Lord totally convicted me of putting my business first. In fact, that was the beauty of my eight-figure business crumbling, losing it, losing it all. 
that was the beauty of it. That the Lord showed me that, hey, that thing that you lost, and while that was brutal and painful and traumatic, and there's a whole other side to that story, the most beautiful thing about that was that the Lord showed me that that had become my idol. That had become my identity. That had become the thing that I was known for and known by. And meanwhile, I had, at the time, two precious babies, one on the way, pregnant with one, who are my main business, my main ministry. And I was spending so much try- time trying to impact the world and, you know, and, and lead women to Jesus. And that truly really is my heart's desire. I do want to point women to Jesus in everything I say and everything that I do. That is it. But I was forgetting the main little people in, in my home every day that I want to point them to Jesus. And so while I can give you the tactical and, and, and again, this is, this is, you are not alone. Everyone wants help with this, but I think because there is this overwhelming sense of there's something in you that knows that perhaps your priorities are out of whack and that something's off. And so I've done an episode, Sacrifice Versus Sacred, because I encourage you to make a list of things that you're willing to sacrifice. If you want to build a six-figure business or, you know, have something a lot of things will take sacrifices. But then you also have to identify, like for example, and I'll tell you one of them, is that when I built my very first business in network marketing, we decided we were going to cancel cable. And part of that was because we were trying to cut back on finances and I really wanted to be able to buy the products. But I wasn't even making enough money to buy the products. And so if I was going to spend, you know, a hundred and I think like $30 every month on products, well then we cut out cable and that allowed me to do it. So that was a sacrifice. Oh, best, best sacrifice I've ever made because I can't even, I don't know how people watch TV. George and I went to dinner the other night on a date and CNN was on and I could only see the the headlines because I couldn't hear it. Oh my goodness, sister, if that is you watching a lot of news and a lot of TV, I, I want to encourage you. Like, I don't know, mm, maybe turn it off. Um, set boundaries with that. But all that to say, I just, I cannot imagine seeing that stuff every day. No wonder our world is so conflicted with two sides. It's it's like almost like an us versus them. And it, it's really toxic. And this was not where I was intending this to go, but I don't know, maybe someone needs to hear that. But anyways, we made a sacrifice. But let me tell you, the first, my first business that I built, I was so quick to write all the things down that I was willing to sacrifice. I was willing to sacrifice time and I was willing to sacrifice sleep and I was willing to sacrifice all these things. But what I didn't do, what I failed to do was make a list of things that were sacred to me, that were no matter what, no matter a no amount of success is worth this. And I learned that the hard way by losing it all. And recognizing that I had sacrificed so much to get to the top, only to get to the top to realize that I am not satisfied. So maybe before I get into the other stuff, because I do want to give you some really tactical things. <laughs> can, can, can we as mompreneurs, as mom bosses, can we not forget that our first ministry our first zone of impact, our first place that we can really truly change the world is is within the four walls of our own home. The Lord really convicted me of this this last year. In October, my a lot of my one-on-one clients were starting to come off of their contract. And of course, in my business mind, I'm like, okay, well, I'm ready to start opening it up, starting to have those strategic you know, post and go lives and and stories to to ramp up my next client. And the Lord kept impressing on my heart, like, no, you don't need to strive for it. And that's a little frustrating for an ambitious business minded person like me, but I didn't really know why. Well, it ended up, we ended up selling our home that month, moving into a temporary um, apartment condo where we're at now. And then George went back to work and then my whole routine changes. God knows. And then in November, I thought, well, I'm going to ramp up. And the Lord kept putting on my heart, 
get your priorities straight. Get your priorities straight. So much that I went on a walk. I That's a lot of where the Lord speaks to me. And then I um, you know, just feel so connected to him and get to hear him because I get to quiet out the noise of my kids and all that. And I was going on a walk. It was right before George was going back to work because I still could go on walks because I had him here in the morning. I don't get to go on my walks anymore. And it has, I cried about it. I totally cried about it. But I knew it was because I, it was, it's, it's my time to spend with the Lord. But anyways, I was on this walk and I'm walking through this new little neighborhood that we're in. And it was a sign of kids playing and it said kids at play and it said, slow down. And I felt like the Lord was highlighting that sign to me. And it said 10 miles an hour. Well, I don't know about you, but I could go at a hundred miles per hour. And I, I love to work. I grew up in a home. My dad it was a workaholic and he still, I love my dad. He's a great, great man, but he's a workaholic. And I'm sure his dad was too. And the Lord has showed me over time, you know, why I have been a workaholic. That's a whole other uh, podcast episode. But um, so much of that is that I've been proving, trying to prove myself to, I don't know who, but pr- you know, proving myself to be enough or to be worthy or to be, you know, I don't know, all the things. That, that's a whole other episode. But all that to say, God was putting on my heart to slow down. Kids at play, slow down. And I thought, oh my goodness. He, and the Lord said, yes, I need you to slow down and focus on your kids. Kids at play, play with your kids. You don't have to build the next six-figure, seven-figure, whatever, Oh, I don't know who this is for. It's for me too, because the Lord continues to put it on my heart because I could work all day. I love to work. I do. I love what I do. And I'm so honored and blessed to be able to do it. But the Lord told me to get your priorities straight. Get your priorities. And he didn't say it meanly. He never does. He never, listen, there is a big difference between conviction and condemnation. And I think a lot of moms who are having mom guilt, is it mom guilt or is it mom conviction? And I think sometimes we can put that mom guilt over the overarching idea that we feel bad because is it really mom guilt? Is it mom condemnation or is it mom conviction? And I will just be very honest and say the Lord absolutely convicted me in a loving way, but he convicted me. The Lord will convict us. He does not condemn us. If you are a child of God, God is, God does not, he will not He's not condemning you. It's He's not an angry God sitting on a throne yelling at you. And some of us have very distorted images of who God is. Now, God is, per- he is perfect. He is just, he is righteous. Yes, he wants, um, he wants us to live a certain way, but, but he's loving in the way that he does that. And so he will convict you if you, if you ask him, if you let him in, he certainly convicted me of that. But, this, this, this is going a different way than I, than my notes. Um, but I'm just letting the Lord speak to me. And I think that, I think a lot of you need to hear this because you see someone like myself who has built multiple six, seven, eight figure businesses and you want to know how I'm doing it. And my best piece of advice to you is to seek God first, seek God first. Listen, I just had a $10,000 launch with the, my newest program, And a relaunch of it. And I told God before I did it, I don't want to do the normal thing. I don't want to do the free webinar. I don't want to do the email sequence. I don't want to have the fancy, you know, funnel and the emails. And I don't, I don't want to do the whole dog and pony show to, to get people to sign up for my program. I don't want to pay, like pay a copywriter to come up with the creative sales copy. Like I, I don't want to do it. I want to be obedient. God, I give you my yes. I know that you gave me this program. I I don't want to do the dog and pony show, but I do want to offer it. And I do want to give you my yes. And just God continues to show me that I don't have to do what the experts say that I need to do or that I should do or that I have to do. You don't either. And I don't know what business the Lord has put on your heart. Do I think that there is a place where you have to there's the one side of it, which is like, you need to know who you are, your identity in Christ, and that he's calling you to do impactful things. Yes, but there's also the other side of you that's like, you do not have to try harder. Don't get out of step and out of sync with the Lord. So this this 10K launch, which is awesome, right? 
and I didn't do anything crazy special for it. I gave God my yes. I seek God first every morning. And I didn't do that. And listen, I have had much bigger success financially than, than 10K and I wasn't seeking God. And guess what? It didn't feel good. It didn't feel good. The amount of money that you're going after, what are you chasing after? The success, what is that that you're chasing after? It won't, I'm telling you, even if you get to taste it, even if you get to taste it, it won't taste as sweet as it does when you seek God first and you stay in sync with him and you do your business and your life with God. Are your priorities straight? Are you seeking God first? I have done it out of whack and let me tell you, it's not pretty. It's not pretty. So I could sit here and tell you my schedule, but it, 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 one, it looks different today than it did seven years ago. My oldest is turning seven tomorrow, actually. And oh my goodness, that's when I became an entrepreneur, when he was born, because I, first of all, I wanted to lose weight. And then I was like, whoa, wait, I could do this as a job and potentially replace my income. So it's just crazy that this is seven years ago that I've been on this journey for seven years. And let me tell you, I have done a lot of it wrong. And that is my heart's desire. You know, a lot of people say, what is the one thing you would like to help people do that, that you've learned from your own, your life and your mess and your story. And, and there's parts of my story that I despise. And I've said out loud, I hate my story. I hate it. I don't want this to be it because there was shame tied to it. But God will take your shame and he will use it to claim you because you are a daughter of his. And he will say, listen, you don't, that doesn't need to be your shameful thing. In fact, that's the thing that makes you mine because you walked through that season and you come out better. And I have come out better from making my business my main priority, making it my idol, making it my identity. And I lost that business. I lost a lot of friends. I lost a lot of the, the platform. I lost a lot. But I found Jesus on a deep, deep, intimate level. And I've known the Lord my whole life, but I found him on an intimate level. Whoa, I am like not where I thought I was going with this, but I know somebody needs to hear it. I'm going to say it again. I'm not going to apologize and I'm not going to erase this one. I'm not. I'm going to keep going. So mom, you are a mom before you're an entrepreneur. Mom, you are a mom before you're a boss. And don't get wrapped up in building your own empire before you get wrapped up in building God's kingdom. I have done the latter and I'm telling you, no amount of success tastes good when you don't do it God's way. Okay, I'm gonna take a deep breath. I'm like getting all sorts of emotions. Okay, so 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 back to my notes. <laughs> Some of the very practical things that I think you guys want to know is one, it's okay. It's oh, first of all, I, I again I feel like this is a little bit of extension. It's okay to focus on your family and to not build the crazy big business. Now it is also absolutely okay to recognize that you are not meant to only be, and I only say that only because you know, you're not meant to be a stay-at-home mom in that, and that is all. Although that is a huge, huge, huge thing, and I commend you. And if that is the field that the Lord has called you to, then, girl, I am, I am, I admire you, and I'm praying for you. I have friends who are stay-at-home moms, and they don't have businesses, and they do it amazing. I do know that the Lord has called me to do more than that, and and honestly, it's probably to help me because He knows I love to work. He knows that I have other things on my heart. He knows I don't really like the typical um, cooking, cleaning. And let me just tell you, my obedience to the Lord in this season has been really brutal. So I've had a cleaning lady for the past five years because that's what a CEO told me is that, you know, that's the one place that you don't need to do that. Let somebody else clean your house. Well, guess what the Lord told me over the last couple months? No, you need to let go of your cleaning lady. You need to take care of your own home. Listen, I am not here to say that and condemn you whether you have a cleaning lady or you don't have a cleaning lady. I have had one and I don't have one right now. But I really feel that the Lord was saying, can you be responsible? Can you be faithful? Can you be grateful for the little that you have now? Where I'm taking you is going to require you to get on your hands and knees and do the dirty work. And are you okay with that in this season? I've, I, I did. I had to let 
my cleaning lady going, let me tell you, I went from like bi-weekly to once a month. <laughs> and then God was like, no, no, take care of your home first. You're a mom before you're a mom before. And again, listen, I've already asked the Lord, can I get my cleaning lady back when we get our new home? Because our new home is a whole lot bigger than our last home and this place. And I'm like, can I get my cleaning lady back? Because I don't know. I, I don't know. I, but there there has been a, the Lord is teaching me how to find joy in the small things and to worship him in the, the, what maybe sometimes seems like the yucky side of stuff, like changing a diaper or washing the dishes or cleaning my toilets. I haven't had to clean a toilet in years. And I say that as I even say those words out loud, I feel like a spoiled brat. Um, but you know, I think that Jesus came and he, he washed the feet of the disciples. He was willing to get the dirty work. So again, I'm not, I I'm praying that the Lord will allow me to get my cleaning lady back because she was awesome. And like I said, I don't really want to clean my big house all by myself. Um, but you know what, if the Lord is saying no, that like, like be responsible with, and, and it's not that you're not being responsible. I please hear my heart. You're not, not being responsible if you have a cleaning lady. I don't know. And I'm sure everyone has opinions about this. You, I'm just telling you what the Lord, this is why, <clears throat> let me just, okay, chill out, Heather. You don't have to uh, justify everything. This is why it is so important for you to hear from the Lord. Because what he is telling you might be different than what he is telling me. And what he is telling me might be different than what he is telling the other person. And so I know that the Lord told me, get rid of your cleaning lady, clean your house, you know, be responsible, be faithful. This is, this is the verse that he used. Be faithful with your littles so that I know you will be faithful with much. And I took that from a children perspective, be faithful with your littles. They are your first ministry. Do, you know, give them your, your all. And then I know you'll be faithful with the bigger ministry that I have for you. In addition to that, I felt like he was saying, be faithful with your little home that you have now. And this was before we even, oh, God is good. This was even before we found the house that we recently put an offer on. It was accepted and we're, you know, we're in all of that. I felt like the Lord was saying, can you, can you be faithful and take care of this that I've given you? And I, I gave God my yes and said, yes, I will clean toilets. I will, I will do all of that. And I haven't done, again, I haven't done this in years. So, okay. So let's, let's get to some of the practical things. Um, I feel like I've, I've gone enough into this direction. I'm just really passionate about it because there is so much pressure that has been put on moms. And I have also been one of those people that's put pressure on moms. I see it all the time in network marketing. Like I see it. I, I mean, I, I recruited hundreds and hundreds of people by, you know, the mom you're made for more. Um, you can have it all and you can have, you know, you can't have it all. And I'm, I'm telling you where to find that it's in Jesus. It's in, it's in having Jesus as your Lord and savior. That's the all. Everything else is cherry on top. But let's talk about some practical, okay? So again, my, my schedule looks very different than what it did seven years ago when I had a full-time job and I started my business. It looked like I would get up early in the morning. I don't even remember at this point what time it was, but I would get up early. I would do my quiet time. And, and at this point, it was probably a five to 10 minute devotional in the morning. Um, and then I would do my workout and then I would do a little bit of work and then I would get ready for work. Um, and then of course, you know, my little one would get up and all that. And then I would come, I would wrap up my work day. And then I would, once George got home, I would work again. And, um, from like dinner time after dinner time on, I would work pretty much that whole time. Again, over time, this has changed. Then we, you know, moved to Texas and I, didn't have uh, family to help. And so then I hired a sitter a couple days a week for three hours each day. So she was like three hours, um, three days a week for three hours. And so that's kind of where that started because my son wasn't sleeping all the way through. Uh, he, his nap times had shortened. 
So I'm so I, again, I'm sharing this with you because I don't think there's a one size fits all, and that's another thing. I can tell you what to do, but one, what's what's God telling you to do? That's another one. But I can tell you what to do, but it might not work for your schedule. It might not. Maybe you have maybe you have a napping child. Maybe you have a kid that's in school. I don't have any kids. I'm homeschooling now, so my kids are here all the time. So the other thing is, is if it if it's not something that you come up with then a lot of times it's not as meaningful. And this is really what my coaching is all about because I don't, I am a teacher and I, that is one of my spiritual gifts, but I don't always just tell clients what to do because then it doesn't really have a deep meaning to you. So um, take take what I'm sharing and, and apply it the way that you feel which I feel like this is that you're probably like stopping at this point um because of the whole first half but um you know be willing to work things around and and listen book a book a strategy call with me book a breakthrough call with me so I can help you figure out what would be the schedule that would honor your family and honor God that's really it sounds I, I hear I hear this from a lot of people and really what you want you want boundaries you want boundaries and you want healthy boundaries healthy holy boundaries that are going to honor god honor your marriage honor your children your family and then honor the calling that he's called you for so let me just tell you right now what my quiet time looks like or not my quiet time what my schedule looks like i have learned the hard way that i have got to get up before my kids and i need a significant amount of time to get the things done that i want to do my son just started sleeping through the night not that long ago my youngest and It seems that, you know, now that he's pretty much sleeping through the night, the other ones are not always. So, for example, two nights ago, I probably got three hours of sleep total between the teething and just children. So I'm still working on this stuff. But here's here's the reality is that I have learned that I personally want an hour of Bible, prayer, journaling, reading time. Like I want an hour of that. So for me, I have to get up before my kids get up, which again, ebbs and flows a little bit. Even my schedule today is different than it was six months ago because six months ago, my kids were waking up at different times. So I wake up, the goal, now this recently just changed again, the goal is 445. I want to have from five to six quiet time, journaling, praying, um, you know, reading God's word for an hour, doing doing Bible studies, that kind of thing for an hour. So from five to six, from six to six thirty, six forty five ish is when I do my workout, and then from six forty five ish, depending on what workout I do, right. Um, up until my kids get up, I work on, I am currently in a coaching program that is, I'm getting my certification in neuroscience for my, my clients. And so I want to do my, my work, my school work, so to speak, um, before my kids get up. And then from any, and all my kids get up at different times. I have three different ones. Anywhere from 7.30-ish to 9. They all get up depending on what time. And so that is my time with them. Breakfast, you know, getting a shower, whatever, getting ready. Recently, I just changed our sitters, our nanny sitter. I don't know what you call her really like our nanny. I just changed her schedule and asked if she would start coming earlier because I was getting very frustrated with the two younger ones for homeschool for, for my oldest one. And so my sitter started coming at 1030. And so from 1030 to 12, I homeschool. My oldest is is in first grade. Um, so it's pretty, pretty easy work, which is awesome. And it's been fun, but it's also been very frustrating. So if you're a homeschooling mom, I, I feel it. But I gave God my yes last year when I said I would do it and here we are and I another thing I've been asking for is please allow schools to open and be quote-unquote normal and um all the things and so that he can go back to school because my heart's desire is not to homeschool my kids um full-time that's it's just not so I keep saying God if this is your will then please give me the desire 
because <laughs> he gave me the desire last year, but it has ebbed and flowed. Anyways, all that to say, I homeschool from 1030 to 12. And then at 12, um, depending on what day of the week it is, but typically I have, I have three days that I have coaching calls. And then the other days are stuff that I do for myself in the back end and different things for my business. Um, Mondays, I don't have any childcare. So that's my day to clean. That is my day to do laundry. That is my day to bathe the kids and, and just make it like a, it's, it's our, it's, it's me with the kids all day. So Tuesday through Friday are the days that I have a nanny and she is here from 1030 to 330. So from 12 to 330 is when I work on my business. When I record podcast, when I do um you know different things for my programs or I get back to my one-on-one clients or I do my coaching calls and then from 3 30 on kind of depends but um my husband usually gets around home around like 5 30 and so I'm with the kids and I am doing wrap-up stuff or whatever and then I shut my stuff off when George gets home so I live the life of doing night calls, especially in network marketing. That was my life. I did. I had calls every night of the week and I can't do that anymore. And that was a boundary that I set up for myself. That was something that was sacred that I had learned the hard way because I had been giving up every single night. My husband was putting the kids to bed every single night. I never, I never did it because I was on a call with, with clients or with my team or some training call. It's like, I can't do this anymore. So to me, that is something that I have discovered that is sacred. And so I don't, I don't work at night. So I hope that gives you an idea. But a few other points that I had written down that I want to make sure I cover. It's okay to ask for help. Like, it's okay to ask for help. Now, I know that a lot of moms carry this guilt because they feel like, well, I built this business in order to be home with my kids, but now I'm paying a sitter. I don't know what the Lord is convicting you on that. Like, is he saying that you don't need a sitter or is he, or not, but, or is that something you're putting on yourself, that mom guilt, right? Um, I, I know that for me, the Lord has given me permission to have a nanny come to our house for a few hours so that I can use the other gifts that he has given me. Your first ministry is your home. I did have that down. I think I went on a rampage about that. Um, you can do anything, but you can't do everything. And you can't do everything at the same time. Some of the, one of the things that I love about, you know, so the Lord is a God of order, right? On the first day, he, you know, on the first day, on the second day, on the third day, and he saw his work and it was good. So God is a God of order. We see that all throughout scripture and, and just through how he created the earth. But we also see that there are seasons in Ecclesiastes. You read about there are seasons for everything. So I want to encourage you, what season are you in? Ask the Lord what season you're in. I do believe there are seasons of ramping up and quote unquote hustling a little more. And there are the seasons of slowing down. I've personally been in a season of slowing down, but I will say this. I know that when God calls you to slow down, it is almost always to speed you back up. And so are you being obedient in the slowing down? It's not fun for an overachiever like me. It's not fun for a goal-oriented recovering workaholic. It's not. But success in God's eyes is obedience. My my recent launch is, is fruit from obedience. The Lord told me to slow down. And I have seven one-on-one clients booked until June. I mean, and I didn't do crazy work to get that. I didn't do, I didn't do anything really except show up and be obedient. And I totally slowed down my business in my opinion. But I, the fact that I have seven one-on-one clients is amazing. And then I relaunched my group coaching program. I didn't do any webinar. I didn't do a free week of whatever. And I've done those before and there's nothing wrong with those. But the Lord has told me to slow down, to focus on my family. And and so I didn't do a fancy funnel and I had no ads, all that. It's a 10,000 plus launch if you're in the coaching world, then you kind of know what that means if you're not in your network marketing, but a 10K launch is is not a a little thing. Um, And so, but I didn't do anything for that except give God my yes. And I'll tell you the number one thing out of all of this other stuff is making sure that your schedule includes quiet time with the Lord. That is where you're going to get the things from him. That's where you're going to get 
the, the blueprints and the strategy. And maybe the strategy is telling you to slow down. But telling you to slow down, I don't know, what does he have on the other side of that? You know, as a visionary, I have struggled with this a bit. And that's, I think, why the Lord gave me the word surrender in this year. Because as a visionary, I see big picture and I want to run after it. But what happens is I run too fast out of pace with the Lord. And I forget that he's doing this. He wants to do this with me. And I don't have to work for it. Like, I guess I do have to work for it. But I don't have to work just for him. I get to work with him. And I get out of sync with him. And so the Lord gave me the word surrender. And if you listen to that podcast, you know that. And so I've been like, oh my goodness, what are you trying to teach me with surrender? But he's really making it very clear what that meant to him, what he wants it to mean to me this year. And it is surrendering the need to know all the details, to need to know the how. So if he's going to get me to a seven figure year, then I need to surrender the need to know the how. I need to be obedient with the next step, the next yes, giving him my yes for the day. And so as you are working on your schedule, whatever of all of this helped you, is there a workout in there? Is there a quiet time in there? Is it work schedule? Are you hiring a nanny? All the things, right? The number one priority is giving God your yes every day, spending quiet time with him. Then he will help you strategize your day. And of course, I would love to help you do that as well. But make sure you're making a list of things that are that that you're willing to sacrifice. And you know, what is that? Okay, where what does your schedule even look like? Recognizing it. God is a God of order, but he's a God of seasons as well. And different seasons of your life will require different things. In addition to that, I'll bring this up because I do feel like the Proverbs 31 woman, I've done a lot of studying on what that woman is like. Cause we, you know, we hear that and we're like, oh, we all want to be a Proverbs 31 woman. But one of the most fascinating researches that I read about that was that Proverbs 31 woman wasn't, she didn't do all those things at one time. She did all those things throughout her life. Seasons. Interesting, huh? And I think our culture today is really pushing for moms to do more, be more. And again, I am not opposed to helping women build massive businesses so that they can expand the kingdom. I mean, that's what we're here for, right? But I'm also not going to stand for what I used to stand for and teach women to hustle and do harder and work harder and sacrifice more and suck it up buttercup and do all these things because I did all that and I got to the top and it was it didn't taste very good. It didn't feel very good. And looking, it didn't look very good either behind closed doors. So as you're making your schedule and you're, and you're figuring out your priorities, how to do it all, the only way to do it all is to do it with the Lord and to make sure that you are making him a priority. And, and moms, please know that your family can be and should be. They're your first ministry. They're your first business. Do that well. Be faithful with your littles. Be faithful with the little. God will know when you're ready and that you will be faithful with the bigger thing that he has for you. Embrace the season of life you're in. And I promise you, if you are being obedient to the Lord and you are following his plans, he will bless you. He is blessing me very much right now in this in this season of my life. He blesses us always. But I am, I am really seeing the fruit of my obedience. But I'm going to tell you that scaling back my business, pulling back, shutting down businesses, all those things, that has not been easy and it has not been pretty and it has not been um sexy to do all that stuff but i'm seeing the fruit god is so much more concerned about your obedience and your heart your heart is what he wants he wants your heart not your hustle he doesn't want your perfectly aligned schedule so that it matches up to you know this is the most successful person yada 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 yes it's okay to have a schedule yes some people need to be more organized than others or I should say want to be more organized and they work better off of a very structured life. But the most important thing is spending quiet time with the Lord, getting into your secret place, filling your cup, mom. You need to fill it. And don't forget your first ministry. Um, it, it's your kids. It's it's your home. It's your it's your husband. It's your home. It's in the within the four walls of your home. If you are obedient with that, if you are faithful with that, the Lord will be faithful with and bigger, and he'll be faithful with the much. Okay, I'm going to exhale and I'm going to pray for us. Father God, thank you 
so many women who I know listen to this podcast and are in our community. God, I know they're moms. I pray this blesses them. I pray that this blesses them, that they are doing a great work within the four walls of their own home. And while that might not yield a six-figure business or a, a rank in their company or a fancy title, God, that you have called them to be a mom and those babies are a blessing. They are not a burden. They are not an inconvenience. They are the ministry, first and foremost. But God, we also thank you for allowing us to use our gifts and our talents for other things. But Lord, I think this is a season of getting our priorities straight. And Father, we thank you for convicting us, not condemning us, but convicting us and showing us where we might have some things out of whack. Lord, we pray that we always put you first, that you are the only thing that we need and that we are already qualified and worthy and loved by you. Even if we don't do anything else, you sent your son to die for us because you love us just the way we are, but you also love us too much to leave us that way. God, help us to die to self every day. Help us to really seek you first. And trust that you will take care of the rest. Lord, we love you. We thank you. And we praise you. And we give all the glory and honor to you. In Jesus' name, amen.